In this video, I'm elaborating on the three important dynamic equilibrium theories in landform development and in slopes development. So, in the previous video, I have mentioned how Davis model is different from the equilibrium model and why equilibrium model are considered more superior because they talk about all different type of processes and not simply erosion. They talk about how time is not the important factor and importantly how landform development is not a unidirectional process. So whenever you start with the equilibrium theory, do mention these three, four points. Now, the three important equilibrium theories that you can know and use. One is equilibrium theory given by Gilbert. Uh, Gilbert in 1870s had talked about the idea of equilibrium. This was one. The second important uh, theory of equilibrium was given by J.T. Hack. J.T. Hack gave his equilibrium theory under the lithological adjustments to landform. And third important theory is a Stoller's theory, uh, which talks about equilibrium concept as a part of open systems concept. So briefly, a couple of points for each one of them. Number one is G.K. Gilbert. G.K. Gilbert is given the credit of having discussed equilibrium theory for the first time. What he said was, the landform development shows equilibrium tendencies in two ways. Number one, a river has a state of a grade. A grade is a balanced state where a river neither erodes nor deposit. The graded state is a type of state where the river's capacity of transportation is equal to the amount of sediments in the river. Whatever the river can transport, the river has that much amount of sediments. Therefore, there is no extra energy for the river to erode and there is no extra sediments in the river which it can deposit. The concept of balance of grade G-R-A-D-E is an important equilibrium concept where a river is in a state of balance. It neither erodes nor deposits. Although it's considered to be a hypothetical state and not many rivers are known to exhibit that, but nevertheless it's an important idea under the equilibrium theory. The second way how Gilbert talks about equilibrium is he talks about the balance between forces which are driving forces and forces which are resisting forces. He gave example that there are conditions where there is upliftment going on or magmatic intrusions going on. The weight above is kind of a resisting force. The driving force is magma trying to rise up. The resisting force is the weight itself. The force of erosion can be a driving force. And the resistance of the rock is also an example of a resistance force. So equilibrium of Gilbert was in terms of this balance. The resisting force and the driving force. Yeah, how one landform is trying to change and another case that is trying to even off the upliftment. There are two ways and this is mentioned in your Savindra Singh. If you are referring to Savindra Singh geomorphology, this is if referring to Savindra Singh geomorphology. This is in the third chapter which has the theories and models of geomorphology. Page number 64 has this idea of Gilbert. The concept of a resistance force and the concept of driving force. Now come to J.T. Hack. J.T. Hack gave his theory of equilibrium in the 1950s and 60s when he talked about the idea of lithological adjustments of landforms development. Now J.T. Hack clearly dismissed the ideas of Davis. So when you write about J.T. Hack, start with what Davis says. J.T. Hack was against Davis' idea of time, against sequential development and against the idea of erosion being the only factor. J.T. Hack talks about that not just an individual landform, not just individual slope, the entire landscape can be in a balance because it talks about how rivers, erosion, the hardness of rocks, all of it together can act to keep the entire region in a balance. Okay, so J.T. Hack's and therefore J.T. Hack's idea is also called as the non-cyclic theory of erosion. It's called as non-cyclic theory of landform development. And the third example of an equilibrium theory is Stoller. Stoller also gave his theories in the 50s and 60s. And Stoller's important version is Stoller talks about the erosion process as a part of a systems approach. So Stoller is using systems approach because there are many things. See, any system concept means what? There are many factors that operate together. There are many uh, you know, controlling factors that are working in unison. Erosion, upliftment, climate, uh, slope steepness and even the hardness or the texture and the resistance of the rocks. So lithological factors are also included. 
So Stoller says, when you act and add all these aspects together, you have to consider the balance in terms of an open systems approach. And Stoller's idea was that slopes have a tendency to balance. Their slopes have a tendency to somehow create a slope so that the sediments can be eroded. So for Stoller, the balance is achieved by a slope getting efficient in removing the sediments. If the sediments are more, the slope will become steeper and remove sediments. If sediments are less, the slope can afford to become gentle because there's no reason for the slopes to become steeper to remove sediments. So for Stoller, the, the process of efficiently removing sediments is the basis of how slope adjusts themselves. So Stoller says the slope angles and the landform elevations are not a function of time. It's a function of how the slope adjusts to in such a way the slopes can remove sediments very, very effectively. Uh, Stoller's concept of equilibrium are in, are in Savindra Singh Geography, chapter number 15, uh, page number 289. The second column has this. So he says that after detailed study of slope profiles, the Stoller attempt to establish the correlationship between valley side of the ground slope and the channel gradient or the slope. According to him, valley sides are positively correlated with the channel slope. And whenever valley side slope is steep, the channel slope is also uh, steep. So that weathered and eroded sediments, material coming from the valley sides can be effectively transported by the channel downstream. Okay, so uh, this is a paragraph in the second column, last paragraph, page 289. So if you understand this much of concept and make some jottings and do look up the supporting material, it's enough to write a note on equilibrium theory of slope development and landform development.